Hello, welcome back. Today's topic is recovery. Sometimes soldiering on is not your best option and instead taking a time out and trying again at a later time is the better strategy. This is very noticeable in sports, but it also applies to sleep. In the context of polyphasic sleep, recovery is actually a fairly recent development. I'm one of the people that had a hand in introducing it actually. As you may already know, I'm one of the administrators on the Polyphasic Discord as well as a main author of polyphasic.net. Here's what we'll be going over today. First a short history of recovery. Then when you should do recovery, why you should do recovery, how to recover and how you know when you are done. First a tiny bit of history. Until December 2017 recovery wasn't a thing between schedules. You only slept more if you had gotten sick and that was about it. People would try a schedule, fail or change their mind and then go straight into a different schedule. This often led to failing those schedules as well, sometimes repeating this cycle ad infinitum. However, the people that took a little while in between schedules to actually recover their sleep debt were noticed to have higher chances of actually adapting. If you combine that with that we figured out that adaptations don't go faster if you start them sleep deprived, you can see the concept of recovery emerge. While this might seem really straightforward and simple in hindsight, it actually took a bit of figuring out. As I just mentioned, there are a couple of reasons to do recovery between schedules. First off, it gets rid of any sleep debt. This means you'll have a higher chance of adapting to the next schedule you try. Also, because you re-stabilize your sleep, this also locks in your circadian rhythm even if the schedules before and after actually vary quite a lot. There are a few times when it's a good idea to do recovery. The first one is really obvious. If you're sick, you need more sleep. If it's just a minor cold, you can see if it dries up on its own. However, if you've got more serious symptoms, like a fever for example, you need to give your immune system the rest it needs so it can fight for you. A different time to do recovery is if you change your schedule either because of a change in plans or because of oversleeping syndrome. Especially in the second case, it's important to do recovery before attempting something new. This also helps keep your circadian normal and keeps you from drifting towards a random schedule. The only exception to this is if you're going for a gradual adaptation route. More on that in an upcoming video. Since you're adapted to the schedule there before you switch, there's no sleep debt to recover. If you are thinking about starting your first adaptation, it's still a good idea to consider doing recovery. First off, to get rid of any sleep debt you might have, and also to find out how much sleep you actually normally need. So by now I expect you're wondering what is this miracle recovery cure? The concept's actually really simple. You go to bed at a reasonable time, I suggest about 10 in the evening, and you sleep until you can't sleep anymore, so you wake up on your own. Ideally, don't use an alarm at all. You do this until you've recovered all your sleep debt. If you do need to get up earlier and have to use an alarm in the morning because of work or class, make sure to allow ample time for sleep. If you wake to the alarm regularly, expect recovery to take a little longer. If you come from a shortened schedule, expect your progress to look something like this. The first few days, you'll wake up at a shorter length, just as usual. After this, your sleep will start to lengthen a bit. This continues until your sleep can be about 10 hours long even, for a week or two perhaps, until you've recovered most of your sleep depth. After that, your sleep length will start to restabilize towards the level you need for homeostasis. Depending on your sleep depth going in, this can be as much as 10 hour nights for two weeks or more. For most people, after a while, their sleep will fall back to the 7 or 8 hours they need. However, some people need more. Once you have slept several nights of a regular length while waking up naturally in a row, you are done with recovery. To better estimate when you are done, it's a good idea to just keep track of how long you sleep each night. So I suggest taking some notes. Congratulations! You have recovered your sleep deprivation and are now done with recovery. Now, for a slightly different scenario, let's say you have been sleeping polyphasically for quite a while and have gotten very used to taking naps or an afternoon core like on a siesta schedule. 
if you want to continue taking these naps, you can even on recovery. However, for those afternoon cores or naps, do use an alarm like you regularly would. If you're not really used to doing these, I suggest sticking to a monophasic schedule. So to summarize, if you are switching schedules, be it polyphasic to polyphasic or monophasic to polyphasic, it's a good idea to do recovery in between. It will take some time, but it will heighten your chances in the long run. If you have any questions about this or any other topics, feel free to reach out to us on the Discord. As always, sleep well.